Welcome everybody. My name is Ricardo Vinuesa. I'm an associate professor at KTH in Stockholm in Sweden. And I'm going to continue with uh, the lecture series on machine learning methods. Uh, and in particular, I'm going to keep talking about the singular value decomposition, which we started the other day. So let me start by um, writing again the full SVD, which is where we left it last time. And then we will elaborate more on the properties of this method and how we can use some math to understand a bit better what we are doing here. So if you remember, the full SVD of a data matrix X is, and this would be X, again, this is the data matrix, is going to be a matrix U times another matrix sigma times another matrix V star. And V star is the complex transpose um, that we will basically have as uh, the transpose of the matrix when we are working with uh, with real numbers. Now, remember, you can go back to the previous video to get all the details and all the derivations. I will just assume that we are starting from this point uh, on the full SVD of the data matrix X. Now, um, there's an important property about matrices U and V. So U and V are what we call unitary matrices. This is important. Okay. And for the ones who don't remember the linear algebra so well, uh, what this implies in practice is that I can multiply U by its complex conjugate transpose, so u times u star, or basically I can also write u star times u, and this will be the identity matrix. If you remember, matrix u is of size uh, n times n, Norway times Norway, which means that the identity matrix will also be of size Norway times Norway. V is also a unitary matrix, which means that I can write the following, so V times V star is equal to V star times V. And this is equal to the identity matrix in this case, because V is a square matrix of size Madrid times Madrid. This uh, identity matrix will be also Madrid times Madrid. Okay, very important. Now, there is an important consequence of this, and it's the fact that U and V have orthogonal columns. So U and V, have orthogonal columns. Okay. Now, another interesting matrix that we are uh, dealing with is the matrix sigma. So let's get a new screen and let's uh, talk a little bit about sigma. Sigma, if you remember, is a diagonal matrix. So sigma has this shape. If we assume that N Norway is larger than Madrid, so it's a matrix that is taller than its fat, so it's a bit uh, elongated eh, in the vertical direction, it has more rows and columns, then uh, sigma will look like this. I will have an entry here, which I will call lowercase sigma one. <coughs> this uh, will not have any tilde uh, on the bottom because this is a scalar, right? It's not a matrix or a vector. The individual entries of the matrix will be scalars. So this is sigma one. This is now sigma two, sigma three, and so on until sigma m. Okay. And M, this is Madrid, is the number of columns, but because Norway is larger than Madrid, below this point, I still have some stuff. And this stuff will be zeros. And outside the main diagonal, what I have is also zeros, because this is a purely diagonal matrix. Okay? So this is what the matrix uh, capital sigma looks like. And this uh, sigma values, uh, probably you're already guessing it, is what we call the singular values that give the name to the method. So these uh, sigmas, these are the singular values
and they are ordered uh, when applying this small this decomposition this matrix decomposition sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 they're ordered in descending order so essentially what we have is that sigma 1 is larger or equal than sigma 2 which is itself larger or equal than sigma 3 and so on until sigma m and all of them are larger or equal than zero Okay, so that's a little bit the idea. And this descending order will be a critical property to really exploit what we can do with the SVD. So bear in mind that this descending order will be something that we'll get back to. For now, retain that in this diagonal. Basically, what we have is uh, the largest value on the top left corner, and then we go down uh, in the diagonal, the values are uh, getting smaller and smaller. Now, <clears throat> if we want to uh, visualize the SVD, the SVD looks like this let me just expand the various matrices so we can understand a little bit what we are doing so the data matrix x is going to be equal to some matrix u and this matrix u will have column uh, so in this case column vectors so u1 u2 all the way to un u norway and again these are column vectors Okay, this is the U matrix. Then we will look at the diagonal matrix. So basically sigma, and sigma will have sigma one, sigma two, all the way until sigma M. And then below this point, what we will have will be zeros. Okay? So the U matrix, remember this U1, U2, UM are uh, vectors because they are columns, therefore they have the tilde. This uh, sigma one, sigma two are scalars. That's why they don't have the tilde. And finally, we have the final matrix here, which would be V1 star, because this is now transpose, okay? So this would be V1 star, V2 star, and then we will just make sure that we go all the way down to the last um, entry in this matrix. So this will be basically Vm star. And these are now raw vectors. Okay. Important to highlight the fact that this one over here is the matrix V star. Okay. So with this in mind, we can get a better feeling of how the different matrices that make up the SVD look like. Let's try to um, express this um, a bit in a more compact form. So if you bear with me, and I will just make this in the next um, screen, if you bear with me, this equation is going to be equal to this. We can write it as sigma 1 times the first vector u1 times the second vector v1 star plus sigma 2 u2 v2 star plus sigma 3. This is for all of them. and so on until m, which is the last singular value, right? So now this would be sigma m times um times vm star, okay? This is important. That means that we can write the matrix x like this. Now, this is uh, what we call uh, the dyadic summation. So this is a sum of rank one. Uh, tensors. Remember that a uh, rank one tensor is a vector, right? Because we only have one dimension. Uh, a rank two uh, tensor would be a matrix. A rank zero tensor would be a scalar. So it is a sum of rank one tensors, which are essentially vectors. Okay, that's good. Uh, and this is what we call the dyadic summation. Now, why is this interesting? The reason is that instead of having to handle a, a bunch of matrices, which are um, sometimes a bit more difficult to, to work with, uh, what we do now is vectors, and that's actually much easier. So, in fact, um, for each of these um, for each of these uh, products that we have here, so let me just pick, for example, 
this, uh, how would that look like in practice? Well, I would have my u1 here, which is a column vector. I would have my sigma1 here, which would be a scalar. And then I would have my v1 star here, which would be a row. Right? So I would have something like this. Uh, and then to specify the sizes, just to make sure that everything is clear, this would be Norway and this would be Madrid. Okay. So this is the dyad summation. This is a way to express in a in a more compact manner the SVD, uh, so we can work with things more easily, right? These are vectors, uh, and of course, if you do this multiplication, not this uh, two-vector multiplication, because I have um, a column and a vector, and I add everything up, I would recover in the end a matrix, right? Because the dimensionality of the original matrix is Norway times Madrid, so all this information gets expanded into a matrix when applying the uh, summation. Uh, so each of the um, uh, multiplication applications and adding up all the terms, then I will uh, recover my X matrix, right? So this is, at the end of the day, equal to X. Good. So um, we can also uh, write this as follows. This is another way of visualizing the full SVD. And remember, the full SVD, uh, this is a, a very critical uh, aspect here. The full SVD does not imply any um, any simplification, any approximation. This is a still an equal sign. Okay. Uh, why am I saying this? Uh, later on, we will come with ways of using the SVD to simplify and to approximate things, right? This is what we call these reduce order models that we will mention several times. When we are doing that, the equal sign will become an approximate uh, equal, approximately equal, and therefore, um, then we will have uh, any. We will not have any more a full equality. We will have truncation and approximation, and that will be the essence of how we can use this to reduce the dimension. Okay, so just bear in mind that we are still doing the full SVD, meaning that we are not simplifying anything yet. So um, we can also look at the full SVD if we have the full SVD for Norway larger than Madrid. This looks like this. So I have my data matrix, X. Okay, I have my U matrix here. I have my Sigma matrix. And remember, I'm assuming that Norway is larger than Madrid, which means that these uh, matrices are relatively um, well tall and uh, skinny. And then of course, because M is smaller, the V matrix will be smaller. It will be a square matrix that will be smaller. So let me just write the dimensions to make sure that everything is clear. This number of rows over here would be Norway. So let's just write it like this. This would be Norway. This would be Madrid. X has the same size as Sigma. So this is Norway. This is Madrid. The matrix U is a square with size Norway times Norway. So this is Norway and this is Norway. And the matrix V or V star, it doesn't matter, uh, is also square and it has size Madrid times Madrid. So this is Madrid here and this is Madrid here. Now, <clears throat> let me also just, because I'm going to do some things to these matrices. We're going to play with them a bit. So this over here, if you remember, is going to be U. This over here, if you remember, is going to be sigma. And this over here, if you remember, is going to be V star. Now, let's take the matrix U and decompose it into two parts. Because um, Norway is larger than Madrid, right? So what happens if I take a number of columns in U that is equal to the number of columns in the data matrix. So I basically do this, I make a line here, and I basically consider a number of columns of Madrid there. So I basically split my matrix into two blocks. Uh, the block on the left, I will call it U hat, and the block on the right will be 
the perpendicular projection to you had. Of course, <coughs> because these matrices are unitary, uh, what we saw also before is that the columns are orthogonal, which means that we can basically uh, have the definition of the right side of the right block of this matrix as being uh, orthogonal uh, to the left um, block, which would be u hat. That's what we're going to be focusing on now. Um, we can also do something a bit uh, similar. Yeah? Of course, in the diagonal matrix, we know that, and if we go back here, what we know is that the number of rows here is m, which means that I can have, a, here is my zero, this is my sigma hat. Okay, So basically, <coughs> sigma hat, here I'm not truncating anything because the size of uh, sigma is already uh, Norway times Madrid. Uh, what I'm doing is just taking the non-zero part uh, of the um, of the sigma matrix that's going to be sigma hat, right? So basically, I can have a dimension that is comparable with um, that of the um, of this number of columns uh, in V. So we are basically expressing the matrices as different blocks, so we can try to interpret things a little bit better. Now, um, we can do one thing, having this in mind, I can actually, I can actually, and if you look at things, uh, so, so if we look at this product of matrices carefully, you will realize one thing. This block is multiplying this block, right? If you look at the number of uh, columns that you have. But this part over here is multiplying this part over here, right? So think about it, right? We have n columns, we have n rows here. So the n first um, columns are going to be multiplying the n first rows here, which means that that will be a non-zero multiplication. That will be basically what I'm having here, right? I'm multiplying my scalar with the corresponding value in that column. But um, the remaining columns, which is uh, Norway minus Madrid, that uh, those columns are going to be multiplied by zeros here. So. <clears throat> In practice, I don't need to have all the full size of these matrices because what I'm going to get is a bunch of zeros that is not going to contribute anything to my reconstruction of the original data matrix X. Uh, in other words, I can write what we call the economy SBD by getting rid of this and getting rid of this. And again, what we will be doing is basically, uh, well, speed up our computation because we will um, avoid performing a bunch of multiplications by zero, right? That's a little bit the, the gist of this. So it's actually a quite uh, nice way of um, making the operation more efficient. This means that I can write now X, which is my data matrix, as u hat multiplied by, this is going to be sigma hat, and this over here will be V star. So let me write here. And of course, because Norway is larger than Madrid, if we don't have any um, we don't have any simplification in the V matrix. Uh, M is, a, is a smaller anyway, right? So M remains unchanged. In U, uh, we will have the size Norway times Madrid. So uh, U originally was Norway times Norway. U hat now becomes Norway times Madrid because we retain only Madrid columns. So this is now Norway number of rows, Madrid number of columns. Um, this matrix is a square, so it's Madrid times Madrid. And uh, the, the sigma hat, which we will have here, will also be Madrid times Madrid. And that's the size of this matrix. So I can uh, actually write here, this is sigma hat. And this is sigma 1, sigma 2, all the way to sigma M sigma Madrid. So those are all the uh, singular values, and this is what we call the economy SVD. Now, question. <laughs> is there any simplification here or not? Is this an equal sign or is it an approximately equal sign? If you think about it, and we look back at what we were uh, explaining before, if you think about it, um, we are still not making any approximation because the only thing that we have done is remove this part and this part, which were multiplications of something by zero. So the result of these operations by retaining the left block and the top block here uh, is exactly the same. So the economy SVD gives us the same answer as the uh, full SVD, just with the smaller matrices, so we can, in a way, uh, simplify the operations that we are carrying out. 
so the economy SVD does not involve uh, at the moment any uh, simplification. Now, uh, an important property is if Norway is larger than Madrid, then the matrix sigma has at most m non-zero values. This is very important. If we think of uh, how the matrix sigma is designed, right, uh, and of course uh, what we have here is sigma hat, but below this point we will have just zeros in the matrix, so we can do the analysis with sigma hat. Uh, it doesn't matter how big Norway is, right? Norway is larger than Madrid. It doesn't matter how many rows the original sigma matrix has, uh, because there will be zeros below m. So the maximum number of singular values that are non-zero is going to go up to m, up to Madrid, which is the number of columns. <clears throat> and this is the maximum number. If you remember um, the properties of the singular values, uh, sigma one is larger or equal than sigma two, and so on, larger or equal than zero. So this one could still be zero. Right? This is going to be larger or equal than zero. So at most, m non-zero values if Norway is larger than, um, than Madrid. This means that uh, we can write the following. Matrix X, which uh, with a full SBD can be written as the product of matrix U times matrix sigma times matrix V star. <clears throat> This is equivalent exactly to the following. We can write u hat sigma hat times v star. Okay, so again, there are no approximate signs. This is fully equal, and this is the reduced or economy SVD. Okay. Um, there's an interesting property here because u was unitary, right? As we remember, so that means that u times u star uh, is equal to u star times u, and that's the identity matrix of size Norway times Norway. But now this is not the case, right? Because the matrix u hat is not a rectangular matrix. Uh, Norway, uh, I mean, now we're truncating, so the number of columns is actually Madrid. Uh, number of rows is not equal to the number of columns. This means that now we can write a note: u hat times and when let's make this star times u hat will be the uh, identity matrix uh, madrid times madrid but and this is the important bit u hat times u hat star this is not anymore the identity matrix norway times norway this is a little bit idea. Okay, this is this is important. If, and if you, uh, I mean, if you look at the properties of the different matrices, these properties will actually become quite uh, quite clear. So now, uh, since uh, u hat is not um, is not a square matrix, since u hat is not a square matrix, then this property is actually not fulfilled anymore. Now, what happens when we have Madrid larger than Norway? Let's look at, at the matrices in this case, so things can also um, make some sense. So if Madrid is larger than Norway, what we have is the following. Now, um, remember, Madrid is the number of columns, Norway is the number of rows. <laughs> now we will have, a, well, basically a short and fat matrix, right? So number of rows is smaller, number of columns much larger. So X becomes something like this. Now U is a rectangular matrix that is quite small over here. Um, the sigma matrix will be having the same size exactly as X, that's important. And now the matrix that becomes big is the, is the V matrix, right? So now we have this big square matrix here, which is V. And in particular, this will be V star. So let's look at the sizes. This is important. Now, uh, the number of rows is Norway. Number of columns is Madrid. The number of rows and columns in the matrix U is Norway times Norway. Remember, now Norway is the small value. Uh, this will be a number of columns equal to Madrid, and this will be number of rows equal to Norway, and the full size of the V star matrix that would be Madrid times Madrid. So I just want to write things inside this. This would be now 
if we are able to pick the green color, this would be here sigma. Okay. Um, and what we can actually do is write that this is V star. Now, let's do as before. Now, instead of because the smallest size is going to be Norway times Norway, we can split the V star matrix. So we go to V star and we retain a number of um, rows here that is equal to N. So Norway. And then what I have is here at the top, I will have V star hat. And this would be V star uh, hat orthogonal, right? Same as before, <laughs> because in this case, the rows are uh, well, linearly independent. So basically the second part would be orthogonal with respect to the first one. We can do the same with the number of columns that we have in the sigma matrix. So we can actually come here and say that we only retain Norway columns. And this means that we have now sigma 1, sigma 2, all the way down to sigma Norway. Okay, remember, now this is the maximum number of non-zero singular values. We will have zeros outside the diagonal, and we will have zeros in this block over here. Um, we will call, this is another important nomenclature, bit, this matrix over here, so the first uh, Norway columns of matrix sigma, this is what we call sigma hat. Okay, and this means that we can write now matrix X, so again the data matrix, can be written as U times sigma hat times V star hat. Okay, and this would be the um, economy or reduced version of the um, singular value decomposition for the case where uh, Madrid is larger than Norway, so we have short and fat matrices. Now, this is uh, everything that I wanted to uh, talk about today. Keep in mind that so far we haven't made any simplification. We have just made sure that a part of the matrix multiplications that we were doing is a bunch of zero multiplications, so we can just skip those. So again, there is a still as an equal sign here. Okay, this is the most important. In the next video, we will start to approximate the matrix. So we will see how we can truncate and we can uh, have here an approximate sign. Uh, this will be for the next lecture. Uh, and what's the level of approximation that we can afford? What's the level of uh, reconstruction of the original data that we should have? And what does that mean physically and also mathematically? So once again, thank you for your attention. Uh, be back for more videos on this and have a great day. Bye.